Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? How's everybody doing? I hope you're good, because I am great. I want to chat with y'all about these bromeliads. <laughs> no, these are not bromeliads. These are poinsettias. This is a bromeliad. Those are poinsettias. Oh, off to a great start so far, huh? Anyways, poinsettias. Poinsettias. However you want to pronounce it, doesn't matter to me. Sorry about the lighting. It's just, it's not, it's so, there's so, there's a lot of, like, see how the grow lights don't always favor lighting for videos. So I, I apologize in advance. Oh, poinsettias. Very, very, very common holiday plants. They're generally not the hardest things to care for, but there are a few things that are kind of worthy of talking about. Like, for starters, how do you pick out your poinsettia? What are some things to look out for? Okay, I just, I can't with the reflection from this one. It's got to go for right now. We'll get back to you in a minute. Oh, actually, that looks much better over there. Okay. I mean, really is key when it comes to picking these guys up. When you get them, does influence how long they'll stay in flower. Picking them out, there are some things to look out for to help you know which ones are going to stay in flower longer. Flowers on poinsettias can last four to six weeks. There are some reports of people having them for like up to six months, but that's very, very, very unusual. That's why picking out the right plant is really important. There are some things to look out for, some things to consider. It's actually one of the reasons that I've left these two up here in their plastic because I just, well, wanted to point out that these are in their plastic. The place where I picked these two up from, they were near a door, a sliding door, and it's cold outside, so they left them in their plastic to help shield them a little bit. They're very temperature sensitive. They're a tropical plant. They really don't like cold temperatures at all. Really above 60 degrees is best, probably even 65. Now, typically when looking at a point set of all the red that's there in the middle, people generally will consider that the flower. That's not the flower. Those are just leaves. Now the flowers are actually right here in the center of the plant and not in focus. Right here in the center. A little flower that's there in the middle, the several flowers that are there in the middle clustered together, that's referred to as the cyathium. The cyathium is the inflorescence, the flowers you see typically on spurges. These are in the euphorbia family, so the, the spurges. The reason I'm talking about that is because, as I was mentioning, being able to recognize those does influence how long your plants will last. So when you pick one out, you want to pick some out where this middle part, that cyathium, isn't very, very developed or even opened at all. Just little green balls is really what you want to see. You can see here, right there in the center, those are barely even open. There's little green dots just trying to open up with some color in the middle. Whereas up here on this pink poinsettia, it's a little bit easier to look in here and see how these have opened up on some of them. You can see the yellow where the pollen is. These are flowers that are going to expire more quickly. It's most noticeable here in this white one. You can see the yellow coming out there where the pollen's been and everything. This part of the plant is going to die off faster. As far as flower longevity goes, you want to get the ones that have teeny tiny little bitty green balls in there that have just barely started to open. Now that's just talking about the flowers. You also want to find a sturdy plant. You want to make sure they're standing upright. You don't want to see any type of wilting or shriveling there inside of their stems because it can actually take a while to get them to bounce back from that. Okay, I don't want to spend too much time talking about picking them out because odds are if you're watching this video, you already have your plant. Basically, you just want strong, healthy plants without too much going on there as far as the pollen's concerned in the center. You don't want to see a lot of holes in the foliage. Obviously, check for bugs and insects. That's a good idea. You don't want to bring those home. And you don't want too much wiltiness or droopiness. Like I had mentioned, strong, sturdy stems on the inside that don't have any signs of shriveling. Those are all good things. I'm going to go ahead and get the plastic off of these guys and talk about taking care of them indoors a little bit. There we go. That is much, much, much better. Once I have my poinsettias home, I like to make sure that I put them in a very, very, very bright location. These are tropical plants native to Mexico, and they tend to grow in full sun. Their flowering is induced when the sun starts to change, when they start to get less light. So it's sort of considered a stress response. Really, it's kind of like, okay, we're not getting enough light to keep going. So the leaves start to change over to this red color. They start to put out an inflorescence, a flower there in the middle. This helps attract pollinators to come in there, spread the pollen around, fertilize, pollinate, and whatnot. But what that means is that once it's done flowering, the plant will die. So it's best to go ahead and cut that top off when they're done flowering. You want to cut about a leaf or two below the red leaf. So here's a leaf that's starting to fade to green. So I would want to go on this particular plant, probably down just below this leaf right here. So you can see this one has red, this one still has some red in it. So you want to make sure that the leaf that's up is all the way green like this guy right here. I'm going to do a whole separate video on the aftercare of these guys because it's actually kind of complicated, at least as far as 
keeping them so that they'll flower again for you the next year. So a very, very, very bright, sunny window, south facing. South facing is usually best for a nice bright light. I want to make sure that they're not anywhere near anything that's really drafty. So no vents, uh, no windows that may get opened or closed. I don't really open my windows during the winter time. It's very cold here but no doors either, because even just the draft from the cold, if it's 20 degrees outside Fahrenheit, then uh, th th that is all it takes to really stress these guys out. And then the next thing, what some might consider the most important aspect is watering. The reason I'm showing off the little foily thing here is because I really don't like these foils. For people who are just getting into plants or maybe don't know any better, they don't realize that these don't drain. Poinsettias do not like to sit in water. They like frequent waterings, but it doesn't need to be drenched. Usually the top inch of soil should only dry out for about a day, if even. It's like I said, light frequent waterings are good with these guys. They have very extensive root systems, so it's not a plant where I usually worry about making sure that it's absolutely drenched to encourage new root growth, but I mean, you want to water it until it's coming out the bottom. So if you want to keep it in your foil, water the plant, let it run all the way through, stop dripping, and then put it back in the foil. Keep it frequent and light, but heavy enough that the water moves out the bottom of the pot. And allow that top inch of soil to dry, but if you see any shriveling or anything starting to happen, go ahead, give them a heavy drink. Just don't let them sit in there. That's the thing with these foilies. They really, they throw things off quite a bit. And that's why sometimes there are some other easy things you can do to sort of dress it up, get them out of the foil, make them look still fun and festive. It's generally not a great idea to repot the poinsettias while they are in flower they're already technically stressed out, so it's not great to go ahead and stress them out even further. Here I have this cute little snowman basket. I picked this up from Michael's Crafts. It was really cheap. You know, when you get in there, when they have their sales, things are like 50% off. So this is, I think, like $3 maybe. You can pull your point set out of that foil and just drop it right in there. I know that that doesn't look like the cutest, most fancy thing ever, but it's really simple and easy. And I could put something on the bottom to help raise the plant up a little bit. That would help. Maybe embellish that with some floral picks, some wintry things. <laughs> that looks great, doesn't it? Hey, just keep it simple and just stick a snowman on top of there. Doesn't matter. The point... I still have bells in my hand. The point is that there are things you can do with them outside of the foil that keeps them cute. And for me, my kitchen is gingerbread themed during the holidays, so I went ahead and threw it in that nice rustic sort of pot and put these gingerbread man picks in there. Simple, easy, better drainage for the plant. Just... This way I don't have to mess with the foil pulling it out. It's not that big of a deal, but it's just really easy to dress these guys up and make them look a little bit nicer. That's really all I'm talking about here. Like with this pink point set up here, that came with these picks in there, that fun spirally silvery twigs, whatever you want to call those. They look nice. They're not hollow. They're just silver, so that's kind of boring. They could have done better. Hey, it's pretty. It'll do. It's just about the simple embellishments you can do to set these apart. Since the poinsettias are already in bloom, I don't worry too much about fertilizing them. It really is unnecessary at this point. If I were to notice that maybe they were struggling, needed a little bit of help, then I would probably do a 50% dilution on an all-purpose fertilizer. The main thing is really after they're done blooming. They're done flowering, that's when you want to up things in the nitrogen. These guys are nitrogen hogs, but like I said, that's it for the aftercare video. Not really relevant right now. Now, poinsettias are kind of renowned for being toxic, right? When we were growing up, that was always a thing. We couldn't have poinsettias because we had cats, and if the cats ate the poinsettias, then they would die. And that's not really fully true. Turns out, after a lot of research, poinsettias are nowhere near as toxic as people thought they were originally. Still not something you should eat or ingest, and I always say keep your plants away from your pets. Whether it's considered edible or not, it's best for them to not eat them, especially because you don't know what the plants have been treated with unless you've had them for a very, very, very long time. But they can and probably will still cause some nausea and vomiting. If you're vomiting outside of a having some type of bug or pathogen in you, that's poisoning, and technically you could even consider that poisoning too. Same thing with our dogs and cats, so it's best to keep it away from them. When you break away their flowers, or leaves I should say, Poinsettias produce a milky sap. You can see it coming out the tip here. That is an irritant, not something you want on your skin or on your eyes. Again, another reason that even though it's not as toxic as people said it was, it's still not something you or your pet should ingest. But when I do repot them, I tend to wear gloves just to be safe because I'm more, I'm more concerned about getting it in my eyes than anything. My point there was really just that I like to be really careful with any fallen leaves. I pick them up right away, and I'm also very cautious to not get sap on myself, just to be safe. Like, I even saw a guy on YouTube, like, take a leaf off of these guys and eat it, and I'm like, that's a pretty dumb thing to do, but 
he did it and he survived doesn't mean you, I mean, what a dummy, right? But still, like, don't be stupid. The variation in color on poinsettias is intense. It's insane. There are so many different varieties of colors you can get now. This is a very small representation. Red, of course, is the most common. This bubblegum pink back here, though I know it's not the most festive or traditional, I like it just because it's pink and it's beautiful. White, fairly classic, and then the one I showed before that kind of had a uh, mottled pink in with the white on that creamy foliage. I guess I can show it to you again. Where'd it go? This guy right here. So there's a very, very light hint of pink in there in the foliage, and the colors and patterns just go on and on and on and on and on. The only ones that are like fully 100% fake or the sometimes I have seen these in blue and like a neon purple where clearly they've been dyed or injected or fed the dye however they do it I don't know it doesn't really matter if that's what you like it's fine go for it but if you decide to keep it and induce it into flowering next year you should probably know that next year it's probably just going to give you white flowers not probably definitely it's not they're not blue it's not you're never going to be able to get them to bloom blue again unless you somehow inject it dye it feed it whatever however they do it i don't know i know with this pink one the flowers aren't going to last too long by flowers i mean the pink foliage the flowers here in the middle we already talked about that just because i can kind of see how they're sort of spent over here in this part and over here so this was induced to start doing its thing pretty early but i'm okay with that oftentimes people get these they get their poinsettias they do their thing then come around christmas time new year's they start to sort of droop look pretty sad they're done doing their thing that's when you want to go ahead cut those flowers off as soon as they start to droop and look wilty cut them off and then i'll talk about everything else after that later in a different video because that's that's very complicated i don't typically even buy poinsettias but they were just calling my name this year at particular i mean come on, it's the i mean look it's just beautiful isn't it just tell me that's not gorgeous i know not christmasy but it's still it's pink and pretty and one of the reasons i don't usually get them is just because getting them to redo their thing the next year is kind of a pain so it just like almost feels wasteful for me to buy it when i know i'm just gonna throw it away and it's so cold here i'm not even gonna be able to compost it i don't think i would compost it anyways because you know euphorbia can you compost euphorbia it doesn't seem like a great idea i don't know i actually hadn't looked into that anyways the pink one i will be keeping i'm going to try and do my best let it do its thing i have had poinsettias in the past where i kept the longest i ever kept them was about three years and i got it to bloom two out of those three years the third year i was like i'm over you and i was just done with it because like i said it's sort of a pain inducing them or at least it was for me i think there are better methods now so i'm going to be doing more with this in the future i'll be keeping everybody posted with that and it's progress. The rest of all these poinsettias that I've picked up here, these are actually going to be gifts and going out to friends, family, uh, clients, whatnot. So that's what all those extras are about. And I thought it'd be cool to go ahead and talk about them a little bit with everybody, show some easy things you can do to sort of dress them up a little bit, get them out of those foils or keep it in the foil. That's all you, you know, you do you, it's cool. All right, enough about poinsettias. Fairly easy plants to grow, at least that first year when you get them, their first season when they're in flower. Keeping them for a month to six weeks, no big deal. Just don't let them be drenched. Don't let them dry out too long. Give them lots and lots of light and avoid drafts. Providing some humidity to them can also be beneficial if you live in a very, very, very dry climate where that soil's drying out really fast. Then misting the area, doing a tray underneath them with some gravel in it so that it's not sitting in the water but on top of the gravel help provide a more humid environment around them that can help a lot too because it's not like other plants where you get them and you're just watering them and watering them and watering them and they're still wilty with those like um i've had that with a lot of hibiscus in the past you can just go ahead and repot them they need a bigger pot with fresh soil because they can't hold on to moisture they're just so root bound these guys root bound very very quickly but if i were to repot them while they're in flower they're really not going to respond to that very well so i prefer to just kind of let them be do their own thing and let them be cute in some other ways like with some fake gingerbread men i'm sorry gingerbread people maybe they're non-binary gingerbread i don't know whatever it takes to not offend the gingerbread people i have no idea i hope everybody's doing well Comment down below. Let me know some of your experiences with poinsettias. Have you tried keeping yours year after year after year and then inducing them to flower? Let me know what have been your experiences with that. Is that something you're even interested in doing? Let me know. I love talking to everybody. You can also get a hold of me on Instagram. I have my social media linked down below. It's the same there as it is here, Tropical Plant Party. Also on Twitter and Snapchat. 
but different names there. I could really nerd out talking about these guys all day long. I don't know why they're so common, but there's something about them that intrigues me. I think it's actually because they're very simple, but also pretty complex at the same time. There's a lot to poinsettias. Don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up. It helps a lot, helps the channel, means the world to me. Thank you so, so, so very much. And subscribe as well. I upload multiple times a week and hit that notification bell. That way you know when new videos come out. I will be doing more follow-up things with the poinsettias probably in vlogs. And like I said, at the end of December, so many videos from now, I'll be doing a video on the aftercare I'll probably go into that sooner than necessary just so that it video's out and ready when other peoples are starting to wilt and do their thing. So yeah, subscribe so you don't miss out on all the fun plant festivities. I hope everybody's doing well. And as always, and most importantly everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.